Hi guys, this is Ivy from Wampley here to show you how to fill out the Paycheck Protection Program form powered by Harvest to hopefully make things a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and get started. First, when you go ahead and fill out the initial form on wampley.com forward slash PPP, it's going to direct you to a page that looks just like this, where it's going to ask you to either click start a new application or continue application. In our particular case, we're going to go ahead and click start new application. At this point in time, it's going to ask you to enter in your email address. After you enter in your email address, it's actually going to send you a super quick email that has a link directly to your application itself. Once you go ahead and click on the application, it's going to take you into a page that looks just like this. And it's going to ask you to complete your Paycheck Protection Program application itself. There's a couple of pages. Don't worry, we're going to go through it together. First, we're going to start on the General tab. It's going to ask you for your first name, last name, email address, and phone number. That way we have all of the details to be able to get a hold of you directly. Next, it's going to take us into the general information. Is this a second draw PPP loan? Yes or no? Your business name, your DBA if applicable, your tax ID type, you can either choose an EIN or an SSN, tax ID itself, when your business was established, month, day, and year, your NAICS code. If you do not have your NAICS code, that's totally okay. All you have to do is go ahead and click on this little question mark right here up at the top. It'll take you directly to the page where you can find that information and go ahead and enter it in right here. After that, it's going to ask you to enter in the business entity type. Again, the business phone number so we can get a hold of you. Your size standard, if it's no more than 500 employees. Alternative or industry, or industry sized. Your, and then your business address. So your street, city, state, and zip code. If you are a franchise, go ahead and enter in your information where it says franchise if applicable. Last but not least on this page, it's going to ask you for the loan purpose and to check everything that applies. So that could be payroll costs, utilities, covered property damage, etc. In my particular case, all I'm going to go ahead is click on payroll costs and we're going to click next. That's going to take you directly into the next page of the application where it has your loan details. It's going to ask you for a couple of pieces of information. Starting at the top, you're going to fill out a loan application. Either A, the signed SBA form 2483, here's a link to download it, or B, the signed upload SBA form 2483 SD. The biggest difference between the two. The first one is if you have never applied for the PPP before. The second is if you are applying for a second draw. Only one of the two applications is required. So let's go ahead, we're going to click on the application, and when we do, it takes us to a page that looks just like this. It's going to ask us for a whole bunch of information. The type of business you are, we're going to go ahead and click Escort, your DBA or trademark name, the year you were established, business legal name, not your DBA, your NAICS code, again, remember we got that on the previous page, the applicant, it, the applicant size standard, your business address, EIN or SSN, business phone number, primary contact, and email address. Scroll down a little bit and it's going to ask you a couple of questions about your payroll. Average monthly payroll, you're going to times that by two, and that's going to have the total number of employees as well. The purpose of the loan as well, just like we had on the previous page, I only have payroll costs, but please click everything that's applicable to you and your business. After you've verified that every single portion of the application is filled up uh, to this point in time, we're going to click Applicant Ownership, and we're going to start with Owner Name, Title, the percentage of ownership they have, the TIN, EIN, or SSN, and the address associated with that particular individual. Then it's going to ask you a whole bunch of questions. So starting at the top and working our way down. Is the applicant or any owner of the applicant presently suspended, debarred, or proposed for debarment? Yes or no? Has the applicant, any owner of the applicant, or any business owned or controlled by any of them ever obtained a direct or guaranteed loan from the SBA that has defaulted in the last seven years? No. Is the applicant, any owner of the applicant, an owner of any other business or have common management with another business? I went ahead and clicked no. Did the applicant receive an SBA EIDL economic injury disaster loan between January 31st, 2020 and April 3rd, 2020? If yes, please provide the details on a separate sheet. Again, I'm clicking no. Number five. Is the applicant, if an individual, or any individual owning 20% or more of the equity of the applicant presently incarcerated, 
or for any felony presently subjected to an indictment, criminal information, arraignment, or by any other means by which formal criminal charges are brought in by any jurisdiction. Please make sure that you not only initial this, but click yes or no. Within the last five years, for any felony involving fraud, bribery, embezzlement, or false statement in a loan application, or any application for federal finance assistance, or within the last year, for any felony, has the applicant or any owner of the applicant been convicted, pleaded guilty, pleaded nolo contendere, or commenced any form of parole? Again, initial, and click yes or no. Is the United States the principal place of residence for all employees included on the applicant's payroll calculation? Yes or no. Is the applicant a franchise? Yes or no. Is the franchise listed in the SBA's franchise directory? If yes, go ahead and enter in the franchise identifier here. If not, it's going to take us into the very next section where it's telling you by signing below, you make the following representations, included but not limited to, that you've read the statements, that you are eligible to receive the loan under the current um, statutes that are in place, that you're going to comply wherever applicable with the civil rights and other limitations in the form. You understand that the SBA encourages the purchase to an extent feasible of American-made equipment, and that the idle loan provided by the applicant uh, was for a purpose other than paying payroll costs. After that, it's going to ask you to um, go ahead and initial next to every single one of the following that you were certifying the following in good faith. That the applicant was in operation on February 15th, 2020 and has now permanently closed. Go ahead and initial. The current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necessary to support the ongoing operations of the applicant. Go ahead and initial. The funds will be used to retain workers and maintain payroll or make payments for mortgage interest, rent, utilities, covered operations, etc. Go ahead and initial. I understand that loan forgiveness will be provided for the sum documented payroll costs, covered mortgage interest payments, etc. Go ahead and initial. The applicant has not and will not receive another loan under the Paycheck Protection Program. Go ahead and initial. The applicant has not and will not receive a shuttered venue operator grant from the SBA. Go ahead and initial. The president, vice president, the head of the executive department, or a member of Congress, or the spouse of such a person as determined under applicable under common law, does not directly or indirectly hold a controlling interest in the applicant. Go ahead and initial. You certify that the information provided in the application and in the information in all supporting documentation is true and accurate in all material respects. Go ahead and initial. And you acknowledge that the lender will confirm the eligible loan amount using required documentation submitted. Go ahead and initial. Then you're going to sign above, you're going to print your name, enter in the date, and your current title. After that point in time, it's going to have a couple of sets of information like how to complete this form, what the purpose of the form is, gives you a whole lot of information about the nuances of the loan itself. We're going to continue to scroll down just a little bit more until we get to page 5, the PPP Borrower Demographic Information Form. This is optional, however, I do recommend filling out all portions of the application. This is relatively simple. All you're going to do is you're going to follow the key 1, 2, 3, 4, X, M, F, X, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, X, H, N, X, and fill out the information about veteran status, gender, race, or ethnicity. After you fill out all of the information on the application to the best of your ability, you're going to go up to the top and click File, and then click Save and make sure that you have this saved on your computer. After you've done that, we're going to go ahead and click Select File. We're going to find your actual application itself, and we're going to upload that directly into the system. Make sure that it shows up right here and that you do have the correct form. After that, we're going to go to Loan Amount. Click here to, uh, to download an Excel calculator to help calculate the loan amount. Once it's open, <coughs> it looks just like this. Excuse me. What this actually does is it's actually going to help you calculate the total amount that you can receive on your loan itself to try to make things a little bit easier and help you get as much money out of the loan as possible. So, there are three different sections. There's non-seasonal business, seasonal business, and new business. Please only fill out the section of the calculator that is applicable to you and your particular business. Follow the yellow portions of the calculator that are applicable to you and only the yellow portions of the calculator that are applicable to you. So, starting in box 9. Total payroll cost for either 2019 or 2020 for employees residing in the United States inclusive of employer paid state and local taxes, retirement contributions, and health care premiums. Went ahead and entered that information into the box. Number of employees earning over $100,000 on an annual basis. Um, put those on the row above. Again, I have zero, so I entered zero. 
Total payroll expenses for the employees earning over $100,000 for the row above. Again, zero, so there's zero here. If you file a 1040 Schedule C, please enter in Schedule C line 31. We do not have that, so we're going to enter it in a zero. If the business is a partnership, complete the partnership tab. We do not have a partnership. We do not have to fill out this tab. After this point, it has very clear directions. Enter this amount under average monthly payroll in the application. So 20833 where it says average monthly payroll. 20833 After that, it has your 2.5. Make sure that that looks the same as the calculator that you have in question. It should be 52083. That looks like it's really good. And if you have an idle, make sure that you enter in your idle economic injury disaster loan program here. In my particular case, I do not have it. After that point in time, make sure that you open up your calculator. Go ahead and click save up at the very top. Make sure it is in fact saved. And then you're going to click where it says select file right here on the form itself. We're going to find the calculator itself. Again, making sure that we're clicking on the correct thing. Click open. And we're going to make sure that that actually is uploaded into the system. After that, we're going to certify that the information contained on the completed loan calculator is true and correct and click next. We're almost done. After that, it's going to ask you for a bit more information. Current number of employees. Employees last year. And then it's going to ask you to upload some information. So it's going to ask you to upload the following. Your quarterly tax filings. It's your form 941 for 2020. Any supporting payroll processor records for 2020 through 2 5 2020, 2 15 2020. Any individual contractors are going to upload their 1040 Schedule C and 1099 MSIC. And sole proprietorship is going to upload their 1040 Schedule C. We're going to go ahead and click where it says tax filings. We're going to find the information that we're looking for on my particular laptop. We're going to go ahead, select the files in question. Make sure that they're all popping up into the system. As you can see, I have these scheduled one, two, three, and four. So we have all of our tax documentation directly here in the system. Please make sure that you're uploading the tax documentation to the best of your ability. This is going to help you get through the application faster. Once you've verified that you have all of your tax documentation, go ahead and click Next. Now it's going to ask you some information about the owners. So it's going to be your first name last name, ownership percentage, job title to the best of your ability. Just find the best one that works for you. So we're going to scroll down a little bit. I'm going to find owner. We're going to enter in the SSN. Again, for all intents and purposes, everything that you see on here is just to be able to give you guys a good example of what this loan looks like. A phone number that we can reach you at, again, in case they do have any questions, comments, concerns, they can reach you directly in case you have any questions. The email address associated with the account, only the primary owner needs an email, not every owner needs an email. You're going to enter in the street address associated with this individual. San Francisco, that's our city. Now we're going to find our state. We're going to enter in our zip code, 94104. Make sure all that's correct. Please make sure that you hit this house button. What this does is it actually verifies the address in question, make sure that it's correct to the best of their ability, and it means that it's verifying that this is in fact correct. After that, it's going to ask you for the same demographic information. It's going to ask you to enter in your gender, your, event your veteran status, your race, your ethnicity, and then it's going to ask you to upload your driver's license front and back full color again to verify that you are in fact who you say you are make sure that we have the correct information to, for this particular individual in question and that they can verify your identity once you have both pieces of information for the particular um, license in question as you guys can see i have my files directly uploaded into the system it's gone up there we're going to click next let's see so there's only one documents allowed so we have to make sure that we just click one document that has all the information that we need. It's going to ask you to fill this out one more time. This is for the owner number two. If you do not have a second owner, you do not have to fill out a second owner. 
owner three. Again, if you do not have a third owner, please do not fill out the third owner. If you have a fourth owner, please fill out the information for the fourth owner. Fifth owner, again, if you do not have the information for the fifth owner, go ahead and continue. After that point in time, it's going to ask you to finish your application. Once you've completed all of the required information and upload signed documentation, click Submit My Application to finish. So if you are not finished, please do not click Submit My Application. Just go ahead and click Finish Later. In our case, we filled out all of the information. We have all applicable tax information on here. We're going to go ahead and click Submit My Application. What it says right here is submission is complete. We're going to be contacting you directly regarding your application. If you have any questions, feel free to contact Harvest Small Business Finance. Here's the website to be able to contact them. But if you have any questions on how to get started, questions, comments, or concerns, you can always reach out to us directly. Thanks so much.